Zoom. You've arrived. <laughs> oh shit. We're back. Yes, we are. I am Mac. This is my lovely buddy, co-partner in crime. My ass partner. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> at this stage. At this stage, we are. Uh, yeah. Some butt play going on. There we'll, we go. I'll let there you know go. why. So, this is Ram Film Reviews. <laughs> we started with some uh, astounding information there. Uh, A little personal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, anyways, uh, <laughs> we're here to give you our second dosage of uh, a oh, review. This is going to be fun. This movie is. Something special. It's out of this world. Oh. It's out of this fucking world. It's something we came across on Tubi. <laughs> He's at, like butt play. After, uh, after uh, deciding to watch Death December, uh, which we just reviewed. Yeah, we kept on scrolling through uh, the Tubi list. And we're like, okay, well, we have one maybe, mm-hmm. right? And then all of a sudden, <laughs> you see something called Rectuma, Rectuma, mm-hmm. and um, I'm like. Is that a giant ass? Mm-hmm. And we click into it. And we see... A giant ass terrorizing Hollywood. Yep. Godzilla style. Yeah. Like kaiju level style ass running amok through uh, through what would be, I guess, downtown LA or Hollywood mm-hmm. or whatever. Just California. Causing havoc. <laughs> and... And uh, the description is basically just saying, like, uh, what was it? Tell you right now. Yeah, it was basically a short synopsis. Basically, uh, uh, well, what's his name? Uh, the main character, Waldo Williams, who is on vacation with his wife. Becomes infected. Infected by... Oh, wait. Don't say it yet. Let's get to that part when when he get when he gets informed. Oh, okay. Um, <clears throat> okay. Surprisingly, this movie is the same has the same rating as uh, Death December on IMDb. Yep. A four point five. Rotten Tomatoes has it as a 40 percent by viewers, none by critics. I, yeah. I, I understand why, but I'm not a fucking critic, a paid critic. So, um, listen. <laughs> Listen, Linda. This we 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 knew. We went into this movie understanding and being fully aware. Uh, this looks extremely low budget. We had no idea about Mark Pirro. At this point, mm-hmm. all we knew. Oh. Which fucking is this? I love his fucking company. Is uh his movie uh, the company Paramount. Paramount, which we it's thought it was a parody of Paramount. Yeah, well, it definitely is a parody yeah, of Paramount. Right. And the uh, and the difference is instead of a mountain, it's a tit. Oh, yeah, it's a tit. The logo was a tit with a nipple on it. Um, oh, God's genius. Yeah, no, the the guy is fucking fantastic. Um, so, like I said, at this point, we had no idea about the director or anything mm. like that. We just saw this and we were like, you know what? <coughs> Let's add that on the list. Let's watch something that's probably going to be fucking terrible. Yeah. And uh, we'll enjoy that. Um, so, oh, Alex, you're back. Um, What's up, Alex? Looking for a second gift? Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, he said he's watching the movie. That oh, December. December. Awesome, yeah. man. Yeah. I don't know, man. You want to might put that down and want to want to watch this one now. No, fuck it with shit. <laughs> Definitely let us know what you think about it. Yeah, let us know what you think about the movie, man. For us, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, so, we decide, fuck it, let's watch this movie. It looks fun. It looks like something that we're probably going to hate at the end of it. But, you know, we'll how, probably have yeah. a lot to talk about. How often do you come across a what? 60 foot. Uh, yeah, pair of, pair of buns, you know, nothing compares to uh, it doesn't compare to J Lo or Nicki Minaj or whatnot. No, so this is more it's just a giant white ass, white, well, yeah. <laughs> it's just attacking uh, Hollywood. So it starts off with uh, Mr. Williams and his wife on vacation, yeah, in, in Mexico. Mexico, 
uh, you know, they're laying about on the beach. The wife is reading a book. And the book is How to Murder Your Husband. Yeah. So throughout the film, she has, you know... She showcases tendencies yeah. of wanting to uh, off her husband. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't know why at this point, but we just... Mm-hmm. We, it's It was obvious, right? Mm-hmm. Um, by the way, script-wise, it's very, I would say, to a degree, basic, right? Mm-hmm. But it's with the intention of it. Like, you can tell it's with the intention of it to add the humor aspect. Mm-hmm. And um, it definitely came across fucking great. Um, so, yeah, they're in, they're in just in Mexico. He's laying down. The wife's reading the book. And all of a sudden, he's like, oh, something bit my ass. Mm-hmm. And I was like, what do you mean? Something bit your ass? Mm-hmm. Where? He was like, you know, like right, right, right by the hole, by the crack. Like something bit you inside your ass? And he's like, yeah, I don't know. It hurts. And yeah. whatever. And then, end scene in Mexico. Uh, yeah, they're back home. Back home. He's at work. Mm-hmm. Uh, what seems like a post office job or something. Yeah. Something like that. It's like a mail room type of uh, scenario. Um, and he's there with one of his co-workers. Uh, and... <laughs> Dude, it gets so ridiculous. His co-worker is... Um, oh, what was his name? Damn. Do you have the cast list? Yeah, I got you. Johnny Pex? No, I think that was the... Oh, that was the... the yeah. That was the the boss. Wanger, Wanger. Oh, man, I don't know. Either way, it was his his coworker. Oh, here was, you go. It just called. It's, he's just titled as Waldo's coworker. Robert Clemens is his real name. All right, so Robert Clemens uh, is um a black dude that's his fucking partner mm-hmm. or his co- his coworker, co-worker. and he's uh, telling him he's invented an invention. The gut. No. Uh, called the rap the rapilator. And it's oh, a yeah. it's a translator of rap music. Oh my god! <laughs> you spin it, and it t- when you put it on the term you're trying to translate from a rap song, it'll tell you what the translation like means. White lingo, yeah. In the, into like yeah, it was fucking hilarious. Um, basic white, you know. Talk. Yeah, it was it was great how they did. They, mm-hmm. It had nothing to do with the rest of the movie. Actually, no, it did play a part. Yeah, it did play a he part. He does at some use point. it. Waldo uses it later on in the film. No, he doesn't use it. Yeah. Um, no, he mentioned it. Gets mentioned. No, no, he uses it uh, to talk to another black guy. Oh, you're right. Yeah. When he's getting jumped. Yeah. When he's getting jumped. <laughs> yeah, but not that one. I was talking about another point where it gets brought up. Okay. Uh, but I'll mention it now because it'll it'll come up when we're talking about the frogs. I'm on I'm on the mask part. part. So far, this movie is good. The mask. Just the, the pig. No. The girl. The Jason Max? Oh, the Jason Max. Uh, Santa, like the, Santa's like coming. Fifth or sixth movie or, or, oh, he's already he's yeah. good, good way in. Um, anyway, so <laughs> he presents this translator thing, and the guy's like, man, that's stupid. Nobody's going to use that. There's mm-hmm. no point to it, whatever. And the guy's like, man, whatever. Uh, so, uh, you know, it keeps going. All of a sudden, he starts, like, fucking, you know, complaining about pain mm-hmm. in his ass. <laughs> he's like, I don't know, man. My butt hurts. Like, you know, something happened. I don't know. Yeah. Something in my butt. But his coworker's like, he's like, you mean inside the crack, inside the asshole? Yeah. He's like, oh, you might want to get that checked out. Or he, or he might know what it might be. Uh, no, no, he no? didn't know. He didn't know. He was just Same. like, yeah, you might want to get it checked out. Yeah. You never know. Um, but he starts telling that he was in Mexico. Yeah. Yeah. Then, and then he starts talking about his wife. And I don't know. She just, it's, uh, I think she's like, you know, she doesn't love me anymore. Mm. You know, it's, uh, I was like, oh, I don't know. It's not like your wife just loves black cock. <laughs> It's like, just, what'd you say? Yeah. I just, uh, n- nothing. It was like, did you just say that? It's like, yeah. why would you say that? It's, uh, nothing, man. Nothing. Nothing. It's funny, yeah, but the, the majority of his coworkers are black. Yep. And he's like basically the only white dude, and his wife's the only white woman around. Uh, so you can see where this is going. Yeah. So um, at this point, uh, we progress a little bit. Uh, the wife accidentally almost drops boxes on him to like almost kill him. Yeah, she's like, "Oh my god, are you okay? 
I don't know what I would do if you died. Very sarcastically. And then all of a sudden another box drops and almost mm-hmm. kills him. Keep going, whatever. And then um, still keeps feeling pain in his ass. Uh, it doesn't go away. So he's like, okay, I'm going to go to a doctor. He goes to the doctor. What was the doctor's name? Because he had a great name too, I think. All right. He goes to Dr. Wan... <laughs> Want some maki? Once? No, no, that's some that's, that's the oh, that second that's doctor, the Asian doctor. To so the first, oh, the white doctor. Yeah. Fuck! What was he? Oh my god! Oh the other oh, Doctor Coldstone. Okay, so he goes to Doctor Coldstone. Um, who? <laughs> um, is a. Um, Gonna check his rectum. Mm-hmm. He's gonna check his ass. He's gonna give him a quick colonoscopy after he's described the pain he's feeling. Um, and he proceeds to do the colonoscopy and <laughs> goes uh, goes full fist on the guy. Basically, yeah. He was like, "Oh, you don't understand." It says this this cavity here is able to open up all the way up to like you know, fits a, it fits a lot of things. Yeah. You know, you don't understand the things I found oh, inside. I he starts going describing things that he's found in mm-hmm. there. And it's like he mentions the gerbils, baseballs, and then he mentions like candles and yeah. a bunch of stuff that he's found up people's asses. Uh, and so and it just progressively gets like more ridiculous. Um, no, Doctor was such a character. Man. Yeah, he was a great fucking character. Uh, and then you know he pulls out of the guy's ass, right? There's no other way to say that. Mm-hmm. Um, does not remove the glove. Oh, yeah. And proceeds to eat chips. Yeah. <laughs> while still wearing the gloves. Uh, and so, you can tell the gloves been inside an ass. Very obvious. <laughs> so, he just, you know, like, says, yeah, you want you want some? Yeah. He offers a guy or whatever. Um, and he starts telling him, you know, what he might have. And he explains... Have you ever heard of the, what is it called? The Mexican butt frog. No. Oh, wait, the Mexican butt humping bullfrog. There you go. Something yeah. out of South Park, man, I think. I don't know. So there, yeah, was, there was a Mexican one uh, in, in South Park that they made up, but it wasn't, a, it wasn't butt humping. Yeah. It was another name. But, yeah, it was the whole thing that if it stares at you, you go catatonic. Oh, yeah, true. Um, but, yeah, so the Mexican butt humping bullfrog... Mm-hmm. And then the guy realizes uh, what he's telling him and is uh, is that he got he got graped by a Mexican bullfrog. Yep, at the beach. At until, the beach, until, and that's until one of Mexico, mm-hmm. and that's a uh, late infection on him that will continue to grow. Mm-hmm. And then he sends him to the other doctor, which is Doctor Want some sake? Want some sake? <laughs> that's what they call the Asian yeah. doctor. And he's actually an Asian dude. Yeah. Uh, and by the way, this movie came out what in two thousand and seven? Three, three, three. Two thousand and three. Yeah. So Doctor Wansom Saki is played by Alex W. Chen. Yeah. Oh man. Uh, he was fantastic, by the way. Yeah. His entrance scene was the best thing ever. Like the guy's just sitting in a parking lot, and it's pouring rain, <laughs> and you hear um, like some music that sounds like very. Uh, like kaiju style Godzilla mm-hmm. style music just playing in the background and it's just him like standing in front of the car yeah. in the rain like this like posed mm-hmm. like classically like posed like this and the guy's like are, are you the guy? like what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> are you just standing there in the rain? like what are you doing? the guy ends up getting in the car he's mm-hmm. like are you the doctor? like are you the guy I'm looking for? Mm-hmm. And yeah, eventually you find out it is. It was fucking great. Yeah, and man. then the doctor's like, "Oh, you know, I usually I don't I don't do this." Or the way I do this, he starts um, buckling uh, his pants for a blowjob. And uh, it was a joke. Yeah, it was a joke. There you go. It was fucking trying great. to fuck trying to fuck with uh, Mr. Williams. Yeah. So they go to his lab, right? His lab, his workstation, one out, which yeah. is a fucking green screen. All green screen. All green screen. <laughs> Complete green screen. He has these like wood shot, like kids wood shop goggles, 
with just you know a little rubber band. The swimsuit, bad. Mo- like the swimsuit goggles. Yeah, it was just bad. But it, 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 it was perfect for the type of film this is. Yeah. So mm-hmm. again, like we were saying, so just to reference, uh, Mark Piero is known as the king of the low budget. Mm-hmm. So to specify why we're talking so much about those details, the budget for this movie was a thousand dollars. Super low budget. Which this is the lowest movie. Well, the movie, the movie with the lowest budget we've reviewed. Yeah, absolutely. Was the last, the la- uh, next one was like a thousand five hundred. I forgot which one it was. But a thousand dollars and. He, and that's not even the lowest one he's had. Mm-hmm. He has one that's lower budget than that. But so, <laughs> want some sake? Is wearing <laughs> goggles. Mm-hmm. And he's like, okay, let me see your ass, basically. Mm-hmm. I need to see what's going on here. And then he's about, you know, he's showing his ass. And then his assistant, which is... It's supposed to be like a, a play on... um, uh, On what's... Uh, Frankenstein... Igor, right? Oh, Igor, okay. Kind of like a play on Igor. Right? I, I think it was Wanger is the, the yeah, assistant. Yeah, I think he was Wanger. Yeah, it was Wanger. Yep. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he was Wanger. So, <laughs> Wanger was very descriptive on talking about the guy's ass. It was like, oh, like he kept on saying really complimentary, yeah. pretty things about the guy's ass. Um, <laughs> and the guy just kept on getting weirded out by it. It was like, dude, can we do this like without that guy in here? Mm-hmm. And once I'm talking, he was like, nope, uh, no, I need him. I need his hands yeah. to uh, put this stuff inside your butt because I'm not going to do it. <laughs> and then all of a sudden they go back to Wanger and Wanger like, you know, yeah. like real, real, real creepy. It, it was uh, yeah. it was a great little fucking transition with it. And because this uh, infection was growing rapidly, yeah, they needed to stick a... Uh, Nuclear thermometer type, you know. Yeah, like a nuclear little cylinder mm-hmm. of like, was radiation. It? Radiation, yeah. yeah, radiation, nuclear radiation cylinder into his ass. Yeah. Into his ass, and you know they they show a quick li- like clip of him about to like receive the thing, and then it just like you know cuts into the scene where all of a sudden the guys like you hear a crack, mm-hmm. and the guys like screaming, and all of a sudden he's like leaving the 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 laboratory. And once some sock is like, I'm sorry, that's never happened before. We've never broken one of these nuclear radiations inside a person's butt. But, mm-hmm. you know, you're going to have to do something about it. And he yeah. te- he instructs him to go do salt water oh, enemas. Yeah. <laughs> Twice a day. Twice a day. Yeah. And- to clear uh, out any of the radiation that has now entered his ass. Yeah. Well, although uh-huh. doesn't even fucking listen to him, he's like, "Nah, I ain't gonna do this." Yeah. So he ignored that until his uh, ass started glowing green. Yeah. <laughs> oh god, it was so good. And then after it starts glowing green, he goes back to want some. Wow. Does he go back? Yeah, or he, he goes, goes to want some sake and tells him, uh, oh, yeah. I, "I, you know, my ass started glowing green." I was like, "Well, did you do the animals?" It was like, "No, I didn't do yeah. the animals. I thought you were fucking with me." Like, what do you mean? I wasn't going to do no damn animals. Like, yeah. salt water? What and are you talking about? And this is the point of no return. Like, he's fucked. Yeah. <laughs> and I think he's about to show Dr. Wasamsaki. <laughs> Dr. Wasamsaki was like, oh. <laughs> they do a fucking long pause of him just screaming. He's going to show Dr. Wasamsaki his ass again to see, you know, make, yeah. that it's green, like, glowing. But then Wanger's there just peeping. And he doesn't end up showing his ass. Yeah. But, yeah, he goes about his day, uh... Then it's nighttime. He's sleeping, I believe. Mm, well, he goes to the day. He goes to work. Yeah. And he starts, like, farting a lot. Oh, yeah. And all that shit. And it was like, what's going on with mm. you, man? I was like, I don't know, man. Like, it's this thing in my ass. <laughs> yeah, then it cuts oh, off to him at nighttime. And, like, he's he's dead asleep. But he, there's movement in the bed. Yeah. And then, uh, what was it? It's basically his ass detaching from his body. And going to kill people. It when they show it for the first time, it just looks like two balloons, like you know, yeah. glued together or whatnot. Yeah. 
And who was the first victim? The wife. Oh yeah, the wife. The wife. Cause so uh, it yeah. go, it, cause when he comes back home, uh, when he comes back from the doctors and he goes to work, remember? Yeah. He's talking about the farting. He goes to the 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 boss's office. And when he opens the door, his wife is like on top of the owner oh, yeah. or the boss or whatever. She's having an affair, yeah. With yeah, the making owner. out with him. He was like, "Oh my god, you're ha- you cheating on me? You're having an affair?" And yeah. the guy is like, and she starts trying to make up a lie. I was like, "No, he had something stuck in his mouth." Yeah. And uh, and the guy's like, "You know what? No, yeah, we're having an affair." And da da whatever. And the guy's like, "Man, oh my life right now is so terrible. My ass, my wife, yeah. all this stuff." And then he farts while doing that argument. Uh, about the affair <laughs> and he just goes home and when he gets uh, he goes home yeah the wife had left and she was at the boss's house oh yeah and they, remember, they were having like they were having they sex. were having sex and it was funny because once they finished it was cartoony too because they did that the fast speedy motion with, yeah. yeah with the squirrely voice and and everything was yeah. just like very fast it was funny and All when right. they finished uh you know the guy came and he, he acted like really like sissy age like oh I have splooge on me and he starts running like, and yeah, she's like, like very why you... childlike. He's like, why do you have to do that yeah. every time? And I think that's when uh, the whole detach of the ass happens, yeah. and the ass goes to murder. Yeah, goes wife. to the house where the where the wife is. Uh, knocks, first kills the. Uh, oh no! Because he sneaked sneak through the window or knocks on the door. Or what? I think it, no. I think it's not. I think it's not through a window. I don't remember. Either yeah. way, he gets in the house somehow. Uh, kills uh, the the boss, and then gets into the bed, mm. and the wife's like, "Oh, so we're gonna go another one around again?" And all of a sudden, she's getting attacked by the ass. Yeah, the ass pretends it acts like it's the boss. Yeah, you know, hides under the covers. Yeah, and then oh. just gets on her face. And when it kills people, it leaves a trail of uh, <laughs> shit. of shit. But it looks like it look uh, CGI it looks like gravy s- or something. No, like no? slime. It's slime. Slime. Okay. Like brown slime. And it just leaves a, a snail trail. And yeah, that's the CGI. The okay. snail trail is a slime. But remember, on their face, they'll have all that stuff on them. So it's like they oh use, uh, they use like brown slime to... Yeah. And it leads its way to the to Waldo's <laughs> to house. To Waldo's house. Yeah. So it was like, yeah, and then when the FBI, because for some reason, oh, no, it was oh the cops, right? Oh, my God. The cops uh, get introduced, uh, who are going to investigate the case. Um... The guy says, okay, we're going to set you up with, um, uh, what the fuck was her name? So it's a lady yes. a- acting like, uh... She believes mm-hmm. she's, uh, Detective Star- Starling from, uh, from Silence, Silence of the Lambs. Lambs. She, so she thinks she's Jodie Foster. Mm-hmm. Uh, or she's, she loves Jodie Foster so much that she pretends she's Jodie Foster. Um... Yeah, there it is. De- Detective Cipolla. Cipolla. And Detective uh, Kasaka? Yeah. Co- so- Cox. Yeah. <laughs> Cox. <Cocksucker. laughs> so Detective Kasaka gets told you're going to be working with Depe- Detective Capone. He's like, no. Is she still doing the whole Jodie Foster thing? Mm-hmm. Listen, we're working with her or whatever. We'll like, is she still just scared of asses and hamsters? <laughs> <laughs> and you have no idea what that has to do with. Yeah. And mind you, this, uh, this actress uh, played by G- uh, Jean Black. Uh, she does a perfect Jodie Foster. She is fantastic person. as Jodie Foster. Yeah, man. she does the most perfect Clarice because mm-hmm. the southern accent is there. It's all just there. Yeah. So, <laughs> so um, yeah, and the guy's like, yeah, well, you're gonna have to work with her. So they go and they go to the guy to Waldo's house, mm-hmm. right, and um, say, hey, so we have some news for you. Your wife is dead, and uh, I was like, oh, it was. It was my boss, wasn't it? I'm going to go kill him. I was like, no, actually, he's dead, too. <laughs> they were both found dead. Yeah. Covered with shit. And uh, there was a trail of, uh, of shit leading outside the house. Kind of like the same trail outside your house. Yeah. <laughs> but they didn't, like, at that point, they are just like, yeah, but it wasn't him. He was, he, he's the husband. He's, yeah. yeah. Whatever. So they didn't pinpoint him at that point. Um, <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's so fucking, like, it's so stupid when you talk mm-hmm. about it, but it's so good. Um, then, uh, they they tie the DNA. They took DNA oh, yeah. from the shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they said, oh, it's the same DNA as the husband, so the, go yeah. go get the husband. Go get the husband. 
uh, he at this point has understood uh, that his ass is detaching from him. Oh, he's straight up telling the cops the story. Well, when he gets arrested. Oh, true. Not, not. But he oh, finally yeah. he figures out that uh, his ass has detached, mm-hmm. and it got back on him. Uh, when they arrest him, they take him down to the station. He starts trying to tell Detective Cocksucker, mm-hmm. it's Kasaka. Yeah. <laughs> that uh, his ass is the killer, but his literal ass. Mm-hmm. Kasaka doesn't want to believe it and he starts interrogating him more aggressively he goes I don't know like, let me try and see and he lowers his pants trying to say come on boy oh yeah get out boy go He's get him shaking his ass go the get cops. him yeah. and the fucking lady Clarice is like because she's, like, oh, she's scared of asses yeah. so she starts freaking out <laughs> yeah and for some reason it gets told later on she's like freaking out seeing the asses and then a little a little fucking hamster <laughs> Yeah, it's shown across the, for the yeah, screen. Yeah, like we just see little flashes of that shit. And uh, and then it doesn't happen. And the guy's like, oh, see, I knew you were fucking... I was like, I don't know. I don't control this thing. Like, I don't know. Maybe mm-hmm. I have to get mad. And then the, the detective cocksucker, Kasaka, mm-hmm. uh, ends up beating him up, mm-hmm. trying to get the information, and activates good old detachment ass. Mm-hmm. Ass detaches. Attacks cocksucker Kasaka, mm-hmm. and um, <laughs> Clarice goes into like a trance. Yeah, for a while, for a good few yeah, minutes, she went into a. Heavy so she trance. takes off almost like up to her bra, takes off her clothes. Yeah, and then she's just humming something. Yeah. It's like n- nonsense, gibberish, mm-hmm. but she's just hu- like just talking, whispers and shit like that, and uh, and the ass escapes. <laughs> like, where does like, the ass go to? Uh, well, between there, somewhere around there, was when he got jumped. Mm-hmm. Because remember, they found another. They talk like the 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 chief comes in was like, we found another caca case. Oh yeah, they call it the caca case. Yeah. Wait, who, who did he kill? The jump, the guy who jumped him. The guy who tried to rob him. Oh yeah. Okay. It was like, give me the keys to your car. It was like, I don't, I don't, I mean, I don't have my keys. Like, <laughs> yeah. you know what? It's like, what? Well, give me your wallet. You only have twenty dollars. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And then while he's saying that you don't have to mm-hmm. you hear and you hear that you oh, hear yeah, the yeah. ass attach and they do a whole incredible Hulk thing where the jeans like rip. Yeah. Oh yeah, the ass like like it looks like a like I don't know for me it looks like friends like the turkey hat or the turkey mask. It just gets on his face and just uh, suffocates him, I can believe. Yeah, basically mm-hmm. just suffocates the person. Um but yeah, so fast forwarding back to the police station, the guy gets, he actually gets the ass to activate, <laughs> detaches, mm. and the guy's like, the, co- the the cop, the detective, just like staring at him like, what are you doing on the ground there, like screaming, mm. or whatever, and then also you just see the ass like <laughs> hovering over him, he turns around and all of a sudden he just... Dude, it, you know what, it reminds me of like the aliens uh, face huggers. Oh, the face huggers. Like, the way he attaches to the face. And he's just there. Um, he falls into, like, a coma with the ass on his face. And they call, finally, uh, some Saki. Okay. And he comes to the police station. Mm. And he says, yes, he has uh, an infected ass oh, yeah. or whatever. And then he goes to try and touch the ass. And the ass, like, runs away like a fucking scared mouse. And he goes, across the floor. And escapes oh, yeah, into the, the city, and that's, and that's when, when it grows, right? That's when Watson talking is like, if we don't stop it now, it's going to continue to grow. How big, Godzilla size? Yeah. <laughs> oh, we forgot to mention the that was high, high knee. Yeah, high and knee. High and knee. High and knee. Which, if you guys are fans of Godzilla, mm-hmm. then you would know from the Mothra uh, movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, the two, the, twins, yeah. the two twins that are constantly singing the Mothra song mm-hmm. to calm Mothra down and all that stuff, like they start singing the Mo- like a Mothra version of the song, but it's what we were singing when we started the movie. Wreck, Wreck to, to Ma- you to rock. and it's through the, they they sing and every single time it's different lyrics, mm-hmm. 
Like, the guy wrote an insane amount of lyrics to that song. Fucking crazy. But uh, they start singing the song and all that shit. And then slowly you start seeing that the ass is attacking people down the street. And slowly everything it eats makes it get bigger Mm -hmm. and bigger. It runs into, like, this lady who's packing her fucking car. And her husband's like, oh, you're always trying to do all this shit or whatever. And the wife's like, oh, well, you don't do anything or whatever. Yeah, she bends over. She she starts doing shit. He's like, that's the biggest ass I've ever seen. Yeah. The ass comes and she, 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 she thinks he's talking about her. And then it just the ass eats her. Yep, completely mm-hmm. whole. Oh yeah, that was awesome. Completely in whole. But then he said he threw her up. Well, I was like, did. no, but she was just covered in shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was a point like I was, it was fucking late, at, like super late. I was like falling asleep. Yeah. Uh, so I did leave a little bit before the end credits. Yeah. Which Randall said that. It was yeah, throughout re- the rest of it. Uh-huh. They keep singing that wreck to my song. And they just can progressively add lyrics to the point that they're saying is like, you're not going to forget these lyrics. You're not going to forget this song. You're going to hate us forever because you're going to remember this forever. Like that kind of shit. Like they're for- paraphrasing. I'm, I'm summarizing, but it's fucking fantastic. Well, wait, the, the one of the best parts for me was the beginning. Which, oh, yeah. So... The introduction to this yeah. movie was with the two, with High and E yeah. singing the song. And on the screen is words. And first it's like a short phrase. Mm-hmm. And then uh, it becomes like a longer thing. It progressively gets bigger, like longer, okay. yeah. Yeah. And smaller the text as yeah. well. All of a sudden, <laughs> like if you say, we, we find ourselves pausing to read the next one because it literally took the whole entire screen yep. and we start reading it and it's him saying like you know it's like one in the morning I'm just typing this up on my computer if you're actually reading this you, you have, have no, no life, life. you have, you have no, no friends. friends like me <laughs> he's like yeah like me I have no friends that's why I'm typing this up yeah. uh, he's like and he starts what is it that he starts bro- he starts talking about something oh and he's God. like saying like this has nothing to do with like Mark or some shit like that or some person He's like he has nothing to do with this. Like yeah, he, has, he starts he's talking about somebody, somebody's life or <laughs> a situation about somebody named Mark, and he's like, you know what? This <laughs> is, and it's just wonderful because he, Randall and I are, are eating our fucking uh, wing. Yeah, we're fucking dying. We're eating wings and like laughing at the same time, dying, <laughs> trying to like complete, <laughs> trying to read this shit out loud and like uh, not the up. <laughs> I almost choked on chicken. It was That's, too funny, dude. It was a great that. like that alone. We that beginning alone, we were at the end of it. We were like, I don't give a fuck. Like this movie is fucking amazing. This is great. It's the best thing ever. Like Tuma, uh, I guess. Uh, what would he put? Intro. Yeah, intro. Or introduction. I mean, I could probably like look up on Tubi, and it was on Tubi, right? Yeah. It just like I gotta read a little bit of what. Yeah, the- cause dude, it was it was so fucking great. Oh, it's already signing me in. Let's see, because I put, I added it to my list because I was like, I would definitely watch this again and again and again. <laughs> oh shit! Bring it in, Dad. No, all right, cool. Okay, so let me. <laughs> oh, also too, if you want to find out, uh, they um. Mark Piro actually has an eBay account, or the company has one. It's called Piro Mount. And he also has a website called PiroMount.com. P i r r o m o u n t. Yeah. He sells his pro- props. He has. He several- sells props from the movies from that he's movies, made. Yeah. He sells the DVDs in bundles or individual. Um, let me see, because here it's gonna. Oh, right, here we go. So he he starts it off with saying, "Sometimes fate leads us." To venture into territories that are best left unventured. It's just four lines of big text. You can, it's, yeah. That's nothing. And then you know. he says, when one ventures forward into an area that should never have been ventured, one must venture cautiously. <laughs> like already, he's just saying, mm. like nonsense. It's just gibberish. Oh my god, he's so fucking amazing. And then he, you see venturing into the unventurable 
can yield deadly adventures, which the ventures might only become aware of when it's all too late. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then we're like, is this just gonna keep going? And then he hits us with <laughs> this entire screen yeah. fill. And then here goes this is this is the best part. So venturing can be a terrifying thing, especially if the one who ventures has no idea of the road he is venturing on. I once knew a man who ventured down a long, unventured path, and it scarred the bejesus out of him because once he got to the end of it, he realized that he had made a dreadful mistake. His name was Dale. Nice guy, except for the fact that he used to bite his toenails in the shower. (laughs) However, the story is not about him. In fact, Dale isn't even living anymore. He died as a result of a freak (laughs) accident involving a Hyundai uh, and an ice cream truck. The ice cream truck was going down the wrong way on a one-way street after selling a dozen fudgesicles to a group of young Catholic kids and the Yugo was heading towards it at an enormous rate before you could say pointless rambling. The two vehicles had a horrible collision. Like, And we're like, okay, it can't get any fucking yeah. bigger than that. And then he hits <laughs> us with <laughs> Oh my god. And then, like, get, like Randall was saying... It just pans, it just, it spreads just to the going, whole screen. Man. Yeah, it just keeps going to a and point. And it gets better. You have to read this yourself if you want to. Yeah, it, it gets allow. so fucking good. Um, he does the next one, which is a large page. And all this is going on while they're zooming in on a fucking giant ass. On a hairy ass. On, yeah. a, <laughs> on a giant hairy ass. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then he wow, gives I us. I can't believe we read that. Yeah, I know, right? This entire thing takes beyond the screen uh, to the point that he writes maybe the first quarter of it. Mm-hmm. And then he says, you know what? I'm going to see if you're still reading this and I'm just going to put everything on repeat. And that's literally what he does. Like he grabs the first thing that he wrote in the first quarter of it and mm-hmm. then he starts repeating and repeating and repeating everything. Yeah. And, you know, it's just fucking it's it, it was one of the most fucking genius things to start uh, especially like a low budget film like this it immediately gets you dying laughing just by those details it, it, it was just fucking amazing like I right away we were mm. like yeah we fucking love this movie and we hadn't even started watching the movie Not exactly uh, and if you actually want to find the physical copy Paramount they have it on Paramount.com mm-hmm. they have it on eBay and on their eBay and then some other people outside of Pyramount are also selling it in bundles or individual. Yeah, in bundles with uh, other his movies. It varies in prices depending on the bundle. Or... Yeah, he has a bundle called the 2500 budget or less six film showcase. It's 100 bucks for the six films. Uh, it includes a Polish vampire in Burbank. Which was approximately twenty five hundred dollar budget, color blinded, which is approximately a five hundred and twenty five dollar budget. Wow. Rectuma, which is a thousand dollar budget. God Complex, which that's the one that I heard yeah. a lot of good things about. Let me tell you, the poster or the artwork for God Complex is a guy flying through the sky yeah. hand in hand with Jesus. Can't get better. It's a that. must fucking watch. Like I have to watch that movie. Uh, Rage of Innocence, which was a $2,000 budget. And Celluloid Soul, which is a $1,100 budget. Now, I think from what I understood was Rage of Innocence and Celluloid Soul were away from his comedic oh, serious from low there. budget things. Like, it was more serious style films. So I haven't looked into what reviews those got or anything like that, mm-hmm. but it was pointed out that those were uh, steering away from his regular, uh, you know, Mark Pirro style thing, which I re- like. You know what it reminds me of? Like it puts me into the mindset of like trauma films. Okay. Like tra- or trauma, trauma films that uh, mm-hmm. you know, Toxie and shit like that. They do really yeah. their own style of films, their own kind of movies mm-hmm. um, that have their own little inside jokes in them and all that kind of shit. You know, it's just this guy's like super low budget. Super low budget. 
And uh, a lot of the movies were done. Uh, he did movies in the 80s, mm-hmm. in the 90s, in the early 2000s. And then he took a long hiatus. And then ended up doing one in 2014. And then one in 2017. And those have been the last the films, films yeah. that he's done. Um, well, I also love what yeah. you found out through his web, their website, Paramount.com. The props are up for sale, man. So, yeah. When it comes to the props, I, I need to go back to the entire list. Because when I saw this... I immediately uh, again we we just know I spoiled myself something because yeah <laughs> uh, and I'm, I'm gonna end up spoiling it here because I just have to the props for this movie uh, Rectuma so he calls it Piro Finalia <laughs> everything is Piro related mm. uh, one of them and these are all the ones that relate to um, to Rectuma one of them was uh, a giant bazooka. Mm-hmm. And the giant bazooka gets used towards the end of the movie. And it's called the Ass Plugger 2000. Mm-hmm. Uh, the prop is up for sale. It's still available on the website. And it's available for 500 bucks. Um, <laughs> what we got next? He has the red dress... That high knee, oh high knee, war, yeah, like war. one of them, I guess, right? It's the same actress, just yeah. Uh, was it the same actress? Yeah, it's just one lady, yeah. one lady in the same dress, and they just like yeah, doubled it. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, Which I thought were twins, but no, it's just one person. So they have the high knee dress available. That one's for one seventy five. Um, I need to see what movie this is in. The, oh, the one, yeah, one, yeah. And then they have. The ass itself. The original prop, the ass mm-hmm. from Rectuma. That one that floats around yeah. and gets on people's faces. Available for 1500 bucks. <laughs> I won't lie, like, after this, I was very fucking tempted. Because I was like, dude, that would be amazing. Like, I understand that it's probably just, like, a really cheap prop. Because, obviously, with the $1,000 budget, probably most of the money went into whatever props they put Correct, together. Yeah. And paying, like, some of the actors, like, 30 bucks. Like, these actors got paid nothing to do this movie, mm-hmm. you know? Um, unless yeah. they're all just family friends or whatever. And he just, like, said, just come yeah. in and hang out. And this is where you yeah. spoiled it. Uh, yeah, the spoil for me was they have a thing called Scroton. An original prop from Rectum. <laughs> original, yes. Uh, and this one is selling for 800 bucks. Um, what happened towards the end of the movie was um, they had to blow up the ass. He lost his ass. Mm-hmm. And then they uh, they uh, found a replacement ass for him. And when they installed that replacement ass, they had to do some work around his uh, scrotum to get everything to fit right. And another radiation (laughs) cylinder broke. (laughs) And again, he failed to follow instructions given to him by one Sumsaki. And uh, his balls were growing. (laughs) The girl, like South Park, then just with like Randy with his huge nuts. It was so good. Yeah. It was so good. But yeah, the props, the prop of the actual scrotum from, uh, from that became Scroton was there the prop of the ass is there like there's so many that's the things. mask I think for the guy that tried to rob him that's what was on him that the third one yeah this one yeah they said it reminded me of the the, the turkey uh, mask from the, the show Friends oh yeah okay gotcha yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so as movie it's, it's not that it's hard to talk about it's just you have to watch it for yourself yeah this is definitely this is... one you have to see you just have to see it. Look, listen, you have to understand it's going to be, it's not going to be the greatest acting. Nope. It's not going to be the greatest script. It's just going to be straight up fucking fun. Take it for what it is. The title just already. Be is. aware it's going to be, it's the lowest kind of budget you can conceive for a movie aside from free. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Um, and entirely just take it as the joke that it is hey what's up it's Rocky right yeah what's up Rocky Rocky? thanks for joining bro 
so you, astounding. I just saw what you did. Astounding full review. Nice. We out. We out here, bro. <laughs> just outside. Yeah, 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 yeah. We wanted to do a different setting for this one. Um, plus, we were like smoking cigars and uh, and enjoying some beers. Which is me. Light that up again. So again, you can watch this on Tubi. Uh, let me see here. There is another way to watch it besides Aww. owning the actual physical Take copy. Out of my lighter. Oof. Uh, you can also watch it on Amazon Prime. It is for rent for three ninety nine, but go for yeah, it, go for Tubi. Tubi. Just watch uh, some commercials. With it. Some commercials throughout it. Uh, again, don't expect anything but laughter and just you know. Ass, ass pun jokes. Just watch it with somebody, or, or you know, or don't watch it sober. Possibly. I mean, we didn't watch it. We watched it sober. We watched it sober. But then again, it's just it's it's, it's us, us too, so we enjoy anything. You know, we make we make light of it, and we just take it for what it is. Yeah, it's definitely worked well having somebody to watch it with and just interact and conversate about the details and stuff like that. This is definitely not a good movie to watch. I mean, it might be a good movie to watch alone. You might just laugh about it. Anyway. Yeah, we like these type of films. But uh, it's hmm. definitely it's definitely better to watch with somebody. But just consider it's a thousand dollar budget with like a total of like what like 10, 10 characters. Yeah, about 10, and, 10 15 cast members. And we're not even talking about the last character that gets involved to finish off the the ass Fuck. when they when they travel outside of the United States. Bro, I'm telling you, I was like half asleep but towards the end, man. Should I spoil? Sure, why not? So, they said that the only way to destroy the ass would have to be somebody to suicide bomb into it. So oh, they shit, went, yeah. They went, they went to Afghanistan and got a terrorist. Oh my god, yeah. They got a terrorist and snuck him into the United <laughs> States just so he could... He, he goes, yeah. what is your goal? Isn't your goal to destroy the asses of America? He goes, well, I got you the biggest ass you can destroy. And that's how he convinces them. And then the guy fully commits because his wife keeps on calling him to nag him. Oh, yeah. He's like, you're not going to come and wash the dishes. Like, I'm, no, I'm doing a suicide, honey. It's like, well, when are you going to be done with that? I come <laughs> home. I'm never coming home. Yeah. It's like, well, you always think about yourself. <laughs> Dude, it yeah, was fucking man. great. Uh, listen, it's it's a fun, playful movie. It is an hour and a half, so mm -hmm. again, you know, decide if you want to watch it with somebody. Uh, if you like these low budget films, then by all means, watch it. We do. Watch it by yourself and let us know. Like I said, hit us up while you're watching. Maybe not it. La Llorona, but oh, uh, this is better than La Llorona. This is sure. absolutely better than La Llorona. You know, you can hit, you could, you could. Uh, DM us while you're watching it like Alex was watching uh, December yeah when December he while he popped up here so uh, that's really good it, it makes me happy I'm sure it makes Randall happy that yeah you guys are going out there and uh, checking out these films for yourselves you know being uh, introduced <laughs> to something new which is new to us as well and glad uh, you know our information is making others salute Stella you know I can't finish my sentence. Or IPA. I want it to be an IPA just because I want Mac to have to drink IPAs. Like, I want that to happen now. Look, I, I got my weapon of choice here. Are you going to hit me with a butt-humping Mexican frog? It's like it reminds you of a scary movie when, uh, <laughs> was it, Carmen Electra chooses the, the, the banana over the gun. <laughs> it's like, I got a machete here, but, you know, I'm going to use this little thing. But, uh... Yeah, thank you guys uh, for joining us. Uh, we do, uh, we're not ending it yet because we got to rate this film. Uh, wow. Okay. So let's get to the interesting things here. Mm -hmm. What would you do oh. if you woke up and found that your ass had detached itself from you? If I was Waldo? Yeah. Oh, my, oh me suffer from Crohn's disease. That's, that's, that's funny. Uh... What the fuck would you do? Rocky said he just got off work. Damn, boy. Glad you got off work. Hopefully it was a good shift. Hopefully you rest tomorrow. What the fuck? Oh, shit. one of them. Yeah, you rest tomorrow and uh, New Year's. Uh, well, what would I do? I'll fucking freak the fuck out. <laughs> what 
what's up? <laughs> no, I'm just laughing at you. Oh. Freak the fuck out. <laughs> yeah, I'll go and search for uh, Dr. Wasamsaki. I'll let Wanger fucking, uh, you know. Okay, so let's do that. How would you react to Wanger's compliments and description if uh, if he was talking about your ass? If he was telling you how great and amazing your ass is? You know, I feel flattered at first, you know. I'd be like, oh, thanks, buddy, you know. But then that creepy look, like, mm-hmm. yeah. I'm like, yeah, you know, get this guy away from you. Like, same thing. But then, you know, he had to be there for the procedures or whatnot. But uh, uh, he, doesn't, he doesn't really do much of a break fucking the, the radiator. Uh, not the radiator. The radiation inside my asshole. And then I'm fucked. Uh, but uh, definitely, I don't know. I'll, that's this is a, What would you do? Nice. What do you say? Rocky. Be like, thanks, bro, but no homo. <laughs> oh, how would you react, man? Like, um, you just sleeping. well. If I woke up and my ass was missing, I think everybody would have the same reaction. Be like, yo, what the fuck? Exactly. I don't think anybody would have a different reaction to that. Um, to Wanger. Like, what would you, like... I think I'd be like, listen, man. Like, you, you're there for a fucking... I, I know what I'm packing. It's all good. You can admire. As long as you don't do nothing too much. Just keep looking, bro. Stay away here yeah, for 20 feet. <laughs> it's like you're there for, like, your, let's, li- your let's life. Let's keep this at COVID protocol. <laughs> you're there for your life and you got this fucking, you know... Like, keep, you know peeping, you're getting an ass procedure and you have this guy that's admiring your ass. peeping bun guy here. And you're about to go under so you can... Yeah, You're about to go under, and he's about to go under. <laughs> Let's go down under. <laughs> Let's put another finger on the bobby. No. But yeah, man. It, overall, it's a fun film. Yeah. Again, another director. I'm looking. I'm gonna look into look into his movies. Yeah. Possibly purchase this from my own collection as well. Uh, like I said, it's something we should definitely watch at least once. Yeah, this is definitely this was definitely a lot of fun. Mm. This was definitely one that I would watch again. This would be good to watch with uh, with like a party of people. Mm. Uh, you know, something crazy like that I think would be great. You know, just a bunch of people getting you know a little trash and watching a movie about a giant ass uh, attacking the city. Mm. We actually, that, that, Godzilla style. That gives me an idea. We should look up uh, other body part body parts that have a uh, grown. To enormous size, you know. I think we might find some other kind of films if we do that search. Definitely, definitely, <laughs> definitely want to do that. Like, you know, watch a serious film and then some what the fuck type shit. You know. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm like, um, I'm ready on E right now. <laughs> All right. Um, We're supposed to do uh, New Year's Evil. Will recommended it, but I don't know. Oh no, we're gonna we're gonna have to leave that one for uh, for another day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we're gonna have to leave that one for another day. Um, but we're definitely gonna do it anyway. Yeah, because it's definitely gonna be one that we want to do. Um, but like I said, uh, for me, Mark Piro knocked it out the park when it comes to making a completely like ridiculous thought of a movie and, and make it into something like even even remotely enjoyable you know like knowing you're doing something that's absolute shit mm-hmm. and you're still gonna make it fucking great you know like that's that's what I took out of it it was like mm-hmm. this is a guy who just had a thought and said and a thousand dollars. giant <laughs> ass t- attacking Hollywood how much money can we put together mm-hmm. a thousand bucks Let's do it. Fuck yeah, I can make it happen. You know? Mm-hmm. Um, I would love to, like, look more into any interviews or anything he's done mm-hmm. to kind of describe his process into something like that. Like, does he try and get, like, some of these props, like, made by people he knows? Mm-hmm. Like, does he know people that work in certain departments? Like, was the, the giant ass that he made, like, something that, that was made out of, like, a, 
like silicone in some place mm-hmm. that he knows that some guy works with silicone or some shit. Or you know, about a sex shop uh, or something. Uh, anything uh, like that. Hey, Lindsay. Hey, Juan. Um, was it anything like that? Mm-hmm. You know, to make such a low budget film, uh, there has to, like, I mean, how much did the actors get paid? Uh, mm-hmm. Were, did any of them volunteer for the role? Uh, any of that kind of stuff. Like, all of that, I think, would fall mm-hmm. into really interesting information when it comes to this fucking movie. Like, I think it would be fun to find out, you know, what went into the thought process of it. Not only that, I want to know what didn't make it into the film. What other ideas he had beforehand, you know, or maybe this is just the- no. It, this this absolutely looks like it was recorded on a home video. Mm-hmm. Like it doesn't. It's not high quality film. It's not. This was made in two thousand and three, mm-hmm. right? Um, and understand the quality of film was better then, but even the quality high quality of film back then was even was super fucking expensive. Um, so you only had what was available. Um, so he looks like he just used a generic old school, like maybe uh, late 80s, early 90s kind of camera. So um, the quality is is um, not found. Well, I mean, kind of like found footage in a sense, mm-hmm. right? It's in that vein, I guess. Um, here. I mean, you can look up the trailer too and kind of see what it kind of looks like. But it's not. It's not like 4k quality it's not hd quality at all um but again like you don't even notice that kind of shit and you notice the low budget you notice mm-hmm. the no budget right off the back um because even when they describe the the mexican butt humping bullfrog um when it's showing attacking his the guy's ass mm-hmm. all you see is these little green like cartoony paws coming at the screen and it just goes to the guy's shorts and he just yeah. keeps going back and forth like this into the shorts like they just got the camera and went into the guy's like fucking ass multiple times and they just put little hands little fucking frog hands to like, mm-hmm. to like make it look like that so um you know it's very it's very low budget it's very fucking low budget um but not like you know it's not gonna look like uh like an early 80s like fucking home videotape i don't think it looks that bad no no grain no, yeah it's not really grain, grainy, grainy or anything grainy, like no, that no. it's it's clear it's it's it works it just mm-hmm. works for the film that it is it works mm-hmm. for what it's supposed to be uh, when buildings explode it's terrible budget mm-hmm. it's evident it's evident it's terrible budget it's like like they got paper mache cutouts and just went here fall <laughs> like it's that kind of shit but again just works for the style of film like sometimes it just functions mm-hmm. how it functions um i don't think this movie would work with a high budget i don't think this would work i wouldn't want to see that i don't think it would work if they would have given them 50 grand mm. i think it would not have looked it, i don't think it would have been as fantastic it was, yeah, this movie, like I said, even though it was an hour and a half, it was just right. Yeah. It wasn't too much of one thing or too much of something else or less. Not. Yeah. Like Randall said, if they would have given a 50 to say 50K budget, it would have just like... Yeah, I think it would have been something like, completely uh, different. Yeah. I don't think it would have hit the way it hit. I don't think like the doctor scene would have been as great. Like oh, the, the doctor... Every uh, time Dr. Wasson telling, Saki no, no, Cold no, Stone. Saki, Cold Stone. About, yeah, Cold Stone. Like yeah. that interaction in oh, that office. Yeah, that was amazing, man. You know, it was so fucking well done. And but, was laughing, crying. You know, everything was obvious. Yeah, the laugh. Everything about mm. it was so fucking perfect. His, his, uh, <laughs> I don't even want to point it out, but I mean, the, the doctor, remember he started talking about all the asses he's ever gone into yeah. and all that stuff, and he starts talking yeah. about, yeah. yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. Oh, they have a deliverance reference in it too. Oh, you caught when the that guy on, the guy goes to a, a church to see if maybe he can get his ass exercised for demons. <laughs> yeah. And uh, all of a sudden, you see like the 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 altar boys are behind the priest, and, uh, and they're like, "All right, well then, uh, let's see, let's see it." They're like, what do you mean? Can, is it green now? Can we see it? He's like. No, I'll, I'll, I'll check when I'm home. He's like, no, we want to see it now. 
Yeah, the priest. I, 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 I think I'm just gonna go home now. And the priest get up, walks gets up, he walks around, and he locks, locks the, door, the door. And then he pants to the two altar boys, and they smile, and it's full on like you know, deliverance, missing teeth, kind of like, uh, you know, southern, yeah, trailer trash, woodsy, woodsy kind of people. And they're smiling, and they're like, yeah, let's get in that ass. And they also, you can tell what they want to do. <laughs> so, the reference was there yeah. for deliverance. Um, so, I, again, it was just a lot of fun. Uh, they did a lot of little references here and there to different things. Again, we did the Silence of the Lambs. Mm-hmm. The reason the girl was freaked out about asses and hamsters uh, was that she was investigating a case of of somebody who was killing like, hamsters like Hannibal Lecter but and no 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 it wasn't. she was investigating a case of somebody who was killing hamsters okay went to the prison to interview a guy that was kind of like a representation of Hannibal Lecter in a way oh, yeah. talking to her like Hannibal mm-hmm. um and he's like will you help me with this case it was like well tell me same exact kind of interaction well, tell me more about yourself it was like why do you love hamsters so much well it was like my I always grew up as an animal lover and all that shit and he was like, well, I'm not going to help you. He goes, but I will show you this. <laughs> he turns around. He opens up his, like, fucking jail suit, yeah. gym suit, takes it off, turns around and shows his ass, pulls a hamster out of his Isn't ass. Isn't it a half-eaten hamster? No, 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 no. It's a full hamster. It's uh-huh. alive. He pulls it out of his ass, and he goes, now watch. And he eats Oh, that's it. where he eats it, yeah. He eats the fucking hamster. And that's why she's freaked out. My ass is in hamsters. <laughs> Dude, oh my God. like I swear, like who thinks of that kind of shit, dude? Mm-hmm. Like, Mark Pirro put that into a fucking movie, bro, and it's that's what I loved about it. Mm-hmm. He got the most ridiculous shit and said, "Put it in." Definitely, you know, yeah. that's why it was so much fun. That's why I enjoyed the movie, um, a lot more than I expected to enjoy it. Honestly, a lot more than I expected to enjoy it. Uh, me and Mac were pretty much laughing, like almost all the, the way through. Time, like yeah. it was almost a, it was almost not a point that we were not like fucking kind of like either giggling or kind of laughing at something that was going on. Yeah, even though I was tired as fuck, I was still laughing. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So, let's get to the end and the brunt of it. Let's get to the ass end of things. All right. How many buns do you rate this movie? <laughs> Out of ten asses. How many asses do you give this movie? I give this eight toots. Eight toots. <laughs> toot toot. Oh. <laughs> oh my god. Definitely an eight out of ten. Mm. Um, just wish they would have shown more of uh, the Godzilla ass. You know, it had this. It's had this airtime, but I wish it would have shown more. Yeah. More destruction. Um, I wish it would have killed more people. You know? Yeah. But again, again, the, no budget. Not he enough. had to work with what he, you know. Oh, he had. Well, to point out one thing, because since they were doing it attacking the city, I just remember the whole other thing. Yeah. That was fucking great how they did it. Uh, but how, while they were attacking the whole entire city, uh, what they used for footage of looking like everyone's going crazy was they used a bunch of riot uh, footage. Oh my god! And you see people with protesting signs. Yeah. So he didn't even bother. <laughs> cutting it to where it looked like it was dude it mm-hmm. was, but it made it like it just makes it so much better like that it was poorly edited in that part yeah you notice but you don't it, fucking care at the it's like at this point you're just fucking laughing at mm-hmm. it because it's like holy my <laughs> like dude what the fuck um but yeah like i said eight out of ten uh enjoyed it for what the fuck it was yeah uh that we even found his website found his, the ebay page the yeah, other, we dug. The other, we the, dug. The other films. Yeah. Uh, you know, we found out the the budgets for the other films, and I just want to watch them all. Mm-hmm. Again, this might sound stupid or crazy to you guys, but the props like are desirable. Like, yeah, it, it, dude, it, it attaches a cult kind of thing to it. You know, mm-hmm. and a lot of people know, uh, especially if you're into like the horror movies or or things like that, <laughs> movies that aren't box office sensations. You understand that they pick up that cult. You know, following, mm-hmm. you know, and you look at different movies that have developed that cool following, you can see why a movie like this would develop that and people would want props from this movie and items that are. Mm-hmm. And there's a few that are sold that are not no longer available. 
but he still has a few of them, which is fucking crazy to yeah. me. But you know, because it does, the movie does have its own little following. It does have its people who've talked about it, and it's it's there, man. I mean, he, we're here talking a good hour probably about this movie. Yeah, to you guys. So yeah, yeah, no, for sure. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and give this also an eight. Um, this was spectacularly fun. Mm-hmm. I really enjoyed it. And what I was gonna point out was remember when they did become the ass, the uh, Godzilla ass. Juan Samsaki was like, "Well, I have a cousin who's dealt with monsters like Godzilla and stuff oh, like yeah, that." Yeah. <laughs> he goes, "He's a he he he's a master of kaiju. The only thing is." He has a speech impediment. <laughs> the speech impediment is that he talks like Godzilla movies. For oh us my God. Americans. So he talks, but everything is dubbed. De- delayed and shit. So it's the dubbing, <laughs> yeah. the, the delayed dubbing. And everybody freaks out. Yeah. So every time he talks, people are like staring at his mouth like, how come I'm not like how come the words aren't matching? Oh my god, I forgot about that guy. So his speech impediment is literally that his mouth is off delay from yeah. his actual voice. Um but they go, Oh, but he's currently in China and then they pan to like the scenic view and they're like currently in China and they go around like this and they accidentally put the Hollywood sign, he's like, Nope, shit. <laughs> I forgot dude, about that. It's so good, dude. It was so much fun. It's, it's awesome. so much a fun movie. It was, you know what? Fuck it. I'm giving it a nine. Fuck that eight. I'm giving it a nine. Because now that I think about all that shit, the speech impediment shit was just fucking glorious. God, yeah, I didn't yeah, watch it. I'm again. giving it a nine. I'm giving it a fucking nine. It was. It was eh. Listen, just you. You need to watch this with somebody, and you might find it stupid. You might hate it. You might think we're stupid for even putting it on that kind of a rate or giving it that kind of rating about or review. A man's ass. That but goes I'm telling you, it, it for us, it was just entirely too much fun. Uh, but so, looking yeah. good, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But with that, we shall go ahead and say our goodbyes. We shall remind you, we are going to be posting uh, once after New Year's passes. We're going to be posting up uh, the giveaway post. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is going to include exactly, Lindsay. You need to watch it as soon as possible. Oh, Alex. Uh, damn, you watched the whole thing. Yeah. Two hours. Damn, it's been that long. Yeah, because we, we probably started watching True. it while, and it's probably been about an hour here. Alex, glad you finished the whole movie. Let us know in the comments in the review or right now. Yeah, yeah. Let it, comment in the in the one that we did for that movie so we can go ahead and, yeah, which, and add it there. You know, we can have that that listed there. Yeah, which was your best? Uh, where, you know, where, the short films you like on the on the comment section for the review of Death December. Write something there. Let us know exactly mm-hmm. what you thought. Which was your favorite one of the short films? Um, you know, just let us know, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, thanks, Alex. Uh, but yeah, Lindsay, you definitely. I think this this movie is too much fucking fun. Even more if uh, if you're consuming an edible. Uh, if you're consuming an edible, you would definitely enjoy this movie. Mm-hmm. It is that kind of fucking crazy. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's just an ass of a time. <laughs> Can we keep saying puns? Of course, man. Puns for the buns? Puns for the buns, bro. I can't come up with nothing right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. If you watch the trailer, though. The trailer yeah, i see you con- next time. I don't know. What's the the trailer is constant puns. It was like yeah, astronomical yeah. proportions. Mm-hmm. It's like fucking amazing, dude. It is really. Re- I mean, the name is a pun. Rectuma. Rectum. Yeah. Uh. It's pretty cheeky. I'm glad, Alex, man. Like, he, Alex is saying, I'm really getting into movies. I'm glad, man. Like that's part of what we want to do with mm-hmm. this. Like it's it's also, you know, telling people more about some of the other films that are out there. Some people might not mm-hmm. risk watching, and then we'll also tell you like ones that we don't like, and you might want to go check it out anyway based on things we said. Mm-hmm. You know, we might not like it, but you know, we mentioned one thing that might be something that interests you. You might want to go check it out. You know, but mm-hmm. uh, like we're happy to see that you know Angel. Went out and watched the uh, Poughkeepsie tapes because of our review. Mm-hmm. Um, Rocky saw the. What was the last one? Oh my god, the rare exports. Yeah, rare exports. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I think there was one that Ellie saw, right? Because of some shit. Was it Ellie that said, saw something? I forgot. I Somebody think she's else still saw. here. I think Ellie's still here. I think I, I don't remember. It was a few people that told us about movies they watched. Yeah, um, my friend Dawn, she, when we were reviewing a movie, she already had seen it. So she had told me afterwards, yeah. Yeah, yeah you know, and we're, we're just, we, we get excited and happy about people getting motivated. Naked uh. ass. <laughs> oh, shit, was awesome. That's true. <laughs> Phil fucking yeah. Collins. Phil fucking Collins. Um, oh, yeah. And I wanted to give a shout out real quick. Oh, yes. So I'm wearing this shirt right here. I don't know if you can see the bottom. But it says, never lose your sense of self. Right? Um, I ran into this guy on IG. Um, obviously, uh, I t- I've talked and do a lot of things that have to do with, um, with depression, mental health, and things like that. So... You know, things come up on my timeline every now and then. And uh, uh, one of these creators and artists came up. And his his uh, name is Any Means Necessary. Mm-hmm. Um, his entire artwork and catalog all surrounds mental health. Mm-hmm. Um, like one of his uh, more iconic uh, artworks is like this skeletal figure. With his thumbs up like this and smiling, like the hugest smile you can do. And on the top, it just says, I'm depressed. Because it's that whole thing that you're hiding behind that smile. So, um, you know, it's it's something that was awesome. And I feel like, you know, even though he has a following already, like he actually has a really decent following. Mm. Um, I just always like to point out things that, that I find and things like that, especially when it relates to something that we do. And we do this because... Uh, it helps us with our mental health. It helps We're us depressed. with our shit. <laughs> so yeah. it helps us with us. So, you know, every time I find things like that, I feel like I want to relate to other people. I've shared this pictures of the shirt and some of the things that I bought. I bought, I bought a bunch of prints off the yeah, guy. Beautiful. Man. Um, a bunch of things that I got uh, because of it. And, uh, yeah, you know. Rather pointed me out to his page. I have his website saved. Yeah. Definitely looking into some uh, some hoodies. Yeah, he Some has shirts, a, and it's quality shirt, man. Mm-hmm. It's a really quality shirt. Um, oh, definitely. Yeah. Like I got, I mind. I, I always feel comfortable with like a really baggy shirt, so I always go bigger than I need to. So my my shirt is like a two X, and man, it sits so comfortable, so nice. So no, we're not. I mean, we're butt buddies. Yeah, we're butt buddies. <laughs> um, no, <laughs> not cousins, but we are both Colombian, so maybe that's where the yeah. the, the thing lines up. But uh, no, we're 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 not we're not. That's just the pun to the movie right, right to my, Nah, no, nah. but buddies. But uh, <laughs> now we're great friends. Uh, thanks to Iris who introduced us back in what was it 2000? Was it 19 or 18? 19 or tw- or 19 it or 18? Wasn't 20. It wasn't 20. 19 it was or 18 at the, the wrestling event. At a wrestling event. Uh, SPW. Yeah, like five minutes from my house in Sweetwater, Florida. Yeah, it was a Sweetwater Pro Wrestling uh, that my friend uh, George Alonzo. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if he still if he still runs it now, but I know he was he was running it for a bit. Um, but yeah, big shout out to George Alonzo. He ran a lot of like events here for indie wrestlers, mm-hmm. and uh, for those events, he also allowed vendors to be there. And Iris was already working closely with Mac. And uh, they yeah. had a little booth, a little spot for themselves. So she's like, oh, help me out. And I went. And, and was... because I was helping George with his audio and stuff like that, I went to the event. And yeah, and then, uh, you know, it was, uh, it was a little, not awkward, but it was just a little like, who the fuck is this guy? Who the fuck is this guy? And yeah, we actually, Rocky, that's funny you say Arepa, because we went to a Colombian place called La La Colina. Yep, and you know we started talking about the food we ate, we eat here at the place, and then we found out we're Colombian. Yeah, each other is Colombian. I'm sorry. Yeah, and yeah, little yeah. by little, that was that was uh, the process of the growth of the friendship. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's blossomed to collaborating and hanging out, you know, frequently watching movies and you know and. Yeah. Supporting each other through the whole mental health and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, finding out little by little, you know, oh, he's into comics, he's into horror, yeah. and then more of the personal, you know, shit we've been through, you know, how our fucking mental health, uh, I mean, you know, mental health, our depression works 
for one another. Yeah. You know, how his anxiety works, how mine's, you know, how, how we process it. Yeah. You know, we bounce shit off each other. Yeah. You know, there's at times we just hang out. We don't say shit about our mental health, but we know we're going through it. You know, we're just like, just fucking hang out. And that helps us out uh, at times even more than talking about it. Sometimes we don't want to talk about it, especially just want the escape. Sometimes, you know, as men, we don't we really talk about our problems, uh, the way society is and how we are, we're told as kids, you know, suck it yeah, up. Yeah, you know? Yes, and, and embrace the suck, you yeah. know. You ain't got shit to complain about, yada, yada, yada. But, yeah, it's uh, it's great to talk about your feelings to people, especially people that are there to listen to you. And understand. Understand uh, through their own way. Of course, nobody's going to understand you 100% because you're the only person that's going through that well, scenario through, yeah. also something that i want to tell you uh whatever you're going through uh, of course there's a whole cliche oh there's somebody has it worse i understand that but that doesn't make your situation any less situation any less worth less yeah because it's your situation is what you're going through um again there's no need to compare don't never fucking compare your, yourself to anybody what you're going through you know no yeah. it's i mean it's obvious that's always going to be the obvious, man. There's always going to be somebody who's worse off. There's always somebody who's struggling more. Uh, there's always somebody who's, you know, dealing with something stronger. It doesn't change the fact on how you as your person mm-hmm. is handling what you are going through at that moment. And that's what needs to be understood. Mm-hmm. Like, you need to be able to centralize that as the underlying issue. Let's say somebody needs to... Uh, comprehend that the fact is i'm me and i'm gonna handle what's going on with me like i handle it like my brain is mine like yeah say randall you know? tells me something he's going through and i'm like ah you could do this and this and that why the fuck are you doing this that's one way of going about it but that's just being an asshole yeah not taking his feelings into consideration or how he processes his own you know scenarios you know yeah. i process my my shit differently that, but, all that being said doesn't mean mm-hmm. don't share your thoughts and don't share your advice just understand how to relay it don't relay it in the sense of saying some shit like oh you know nah you're not going that yeah that's not that bad man no come on that's not that bad. that's not how you relay that shit it's not yeah man. the comfortable way to relay was like okay i get you you know but uh how about you try this for a change do something like this if you want to try and give some kind of advice or something like that because I've given Mac advice and I told him dude why don't you try doing this mm. it's up to him if he wants to take that information and try it out and maybe it works for him or maybe he knows that it won't work for him it's up to that you know? exactly. but the reality is each person is their person we're not the same fucking people yeah. and that's just the reality of the fucking world we're all different in a lot of fucking ways with emotional uh, with uh, anger, with frustrations, with fears, with everything, you know. Yeah, it's, how we express ourselves. Some people don't even know how to express themselves. Yeah. Because growing up, maybe you're you're trying to tell somebody how you feel, and they bash you about it, and you yeah. just you stay quiet. You know, you don't talk because you just you know repress everything or bottle up everything. Yeah. And also, if somebody opens up to you, don't take it lightly or be like, ah, you're not going through that shit. Because they've never opened up to you until that moment, they they're fucking vulnerable. Vulnerable. They they found that moment and they found you as a person to uh, open up to. Yeah. So hear them out. You know, just because they've never shown you that side of them, doesn't mean they're not going through that. Or maybe if they're a negative person, um, how would I say this? Or they or they always think negative. Doesn't mean that they're being negative at the moment. It's just they don't know how to handle it. Maybe they're just coming to you for advice. Yeah. Again, you're not in their situation, so you might not see it how they see it. Uh, but just, how, how would I say, just lend a hand, man. You know. Yeah. You know, you might you might be the answer to the you know the answer yeah. to what they're going through. You know, yeah. and just, it, and it could be simple as just like you know a conversation. Uh, that's true, Alex. If anybody, if everybody was the same, life would be hell. Mm-hmm. That's that's pretty accurate. Um, yeah, the diversity and the and the differences in people, you know, are what make the the world function. You know, but um, you know, 
in the end, all, all it can take sometimes is just a conversation, or not even a conversation, just an ear. Yeah. You know, sometimes it just takes allowing somebody to vent, to say what they need to say, not requiring a response, not requiring you to say like, oh, like that's not that bad, or you know, there's people who have it worse or any of that shit. Because yeah, it's it, just like if you if somebody tells you that, that's basically they don't want to listen to you they're they don't it feels wanna, like that yeah they don't want to listen to you yeah. or uh like they take your shit for like you know, lightly like oh you know get get the fuck over it you yeah know? it's like nah bro like you like and then what then they come to you for you know for help or something it's like and then you have to listen to them it's like man but yeah go ahead <laughs> but yeah no like that's it i mean pretty much and that's again like that's what led to this you know we've We've said it um, more than enough times on here. It's what led to this. Like this is an escape for us mentally. It's an escape for us uh, and allows us to open up about these topics and and speak more open about it and uh, and share more than you know a lot of people would normally fucking share in a public forum like this. You know, so you know it it allows us to uh, you know spread our wings a little bit more to there and and. Uh, and we encourage you to do the same, you know. It's and that it don't don't stay quiet if you are going through it either. Don't hold it in, don't bottle it in, because you know, in the end when you bottle, you it will, just grows. You're gonna explode. It grows and you yeah. wanna avoid that. So if you are going through something, search for someone in your surroundings, search for somebody around you. If you need a DM our page, DM our page. Yeah. You know, yeah. send us a message. We're not gonna publicly to put anything out there. You know, um, we'll, we'll, we'll fucking reply, man. We'll yeah, reply. Yeah. And that's just the way that we've, like, handled our shit, you know? Yeah, you feel, you feel alone. You feel like nobody listens. Nobody's there for you. Yeah. What's up, straight out of Arkham? You know, maybe change change the people you go to to yeah. seek, you know, help. Let's yep. say, you know, you go to friend number one, you know, they never listen or they're never, they're never there for you. Yep. You know, stop going to that friend or stop telling that friend things about what you're actually going through you know and seek somebody that has an idea of what you know what meant what you're meant has an idea of what you're going through maybe has their own mental issues and you know they could grasp whatever you're going through you know like i said there's also uh was that mental uh, health issue b bpd bipolar uh or bipolar personality disorder that's a tough one i don't know much about it but i know friends that have it that's really tough. Um, you there's know, there's, lot, man, there's a lot of stuff. So there's a lot. I mean, what, if one thing, anything like science and medical science has proven to us is that there is a lot more. Yo, Brandon, what's up, baby? There's a lot more to the human brain yeah. uh, than, than one knows, and it's still things that we're discovering. Um, you know, which is, you know, you start understanding things that went through uh, for people in the past when you start like correlating personality to current uh, issues that we found out now and you start understanding oh this person back in the 50s or back in the 40s back in the 30s back in the 20s did shit like this well this correlates with this kind of like issue or whatever now we're able to find out because of the you know evolution of science and medical fields to understand what people were actually going through in a lot of the times and you understand uh, the levels of depression, the levels of emotional distress, mm -hmm. the levels of stress itself, the levels of fear, the levels of pain, the levels of, of, uh, of uh, you know, bipolarism or any of that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Like, there's so many things that fall into line with uh, with mental health that um, it just it's gonna keep growing. You know, it's gonna keep growing. Look at look how many fucking fears, you know, exist in in. Mm -hmm. in our brains now like or for like in general like there's people who fucking fear dirt there's people who fear yeah. you know the most what you would consider the most like weird or strange thing and they fear it yeah like fear a color or some item some random yeah. item a household item mm -hmm. um uh, alex it's it's that my name is randall his name is mac mac m-a-c-k yeah um but yeah i do thank you guys for hearing us out you know whether you agree with us or not Again, you have your own opinion. We do as well. Uh, yeah. As long as you don't help each other out, 
be there for one another. Um, you know, and something I've been learning is just changing your pers- <laughs> your perspective. Rocky says, "I fear crows a little bit, just a little bit." Hey, man, crows are fucking dangerous. You know, some of them attack you. They, uh, yeah, they target you. Man, fucking roaches target. Yeah. Fucking hate roaches. Uh, La cucaracha, man. They yeah, fly. Man, uh, a fucking ro- flying roach. Come on, I will, I will flip this table if a flying cockroach just suddenly flew around here. I will turn into the biggest sissy <laughs> you've ever seen. My voice is just ah, high pitched. Fucking flip this table. But yeah, man. Thanks for hearing us out. Like I said, also too, well, I've been learning. I've been sharing with people, changing your perspective. You know, I'm 31 years old, and for the for the first t- I guess for the first time in my life, I'm thinking positive, and it's actually taking action and turning those positive thoughts, you know, into action. Basically, yeah. Yeah. Um, putting it into play. My life has been changing for the best. You know, I still struggle, of course. Even though I show you guys smiling faces and laughter and all that, I still go through my pain, which you know, it's trauma I have to deal. I have to deal with and uh, fix. And it doesn't. It is not a snap on a finger. You, you know, you know the fucking Cinderella and shit. Bibbidi bobbidi boo. You know, who's out to get you? You know, shit. You know, dealing with paranoia, all that shit. Uh, what not? Whatever I go through. Uh, and like I said, just make the best out of it. You know be there for people and like I don't know man Just it's, I'm learning every day we're human we're fucking learning every fucking day you know we're gonna make mistakes we're gonna hurt each other but at the end of the day it's just recognizing and being aware of you know what you're doing and just be genuine man just be be you be you man you're gonna you're being judged every fucking day whether you do good or bad you know so why 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 fucking fear Fear being yourself, just be you. You know, at the end of the day, it's people that you either don't care about, you don't care about them. You know, not saying this, but I'm saying like other random people you see in the street. You know, acquaintances, maybe a job or something. Yeah. But you know, his opinion, at least to me, matters. There's somebody close to me and shit. You know, I'd rather listen to them than some random person in the street. But again, like I said, we all have perspective and opinions and thought processes. Processes. So yeah, I, I could go on and on. I don't know if you guys want to hear it, but yeah, Randall, take it away. I mean, the last thing I'll probably say about it is just, uh, like, I think it relays a lot. And there's, like, a current, and, I, I mean, TikTok is a thing, right? Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of dumb shit on TikTok, and then there's a lot of shit that's, that sparks a lot of interest. And yeah, one, of the things, your path. <laughs> one of the things that l- l- recently has started to kind of, like, hit about and i've spoken about how big of a crisis like right now the world is in when it comes to like mental health like obviously understanding we're in the middle of a pandemic still right and right now it's been more rampant with you know with more uh, more of a contagious variant Mm -hmm. or whatever bullshit but um mental health is such a strong issue right now and one of the current trends going on 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 tiktok right now is uh them saying like post a video of when you were at your lowest point and or your most depressed point mm-hmm. and nobody recognized it. And it's like a lot of people pointing videos when they're like smiling, laughing, yeah. and doing things in a party or doing something, you know, kind of ridiculous. And nobody knew that at that point, in that moment, that person was struggling inside. But you wouldn't know because they're hiding it behind an action of joy. Yeah, because the people, people like that, you know, like yourself, like us, uh, you you don't want to feel like a burden to other people. Yeah, and it's kind of strange how I'm, um, I'm linking this or putting this together. But think about serial killers. You don't think, let's say, your neighbor, it's gonna be you know, a serial killer. You know, they hide it so well. Yeah, you know, it's a weird analogy, and I put it together. But yeah, and that way you you you're not you don't want to tell people. You know, <laughs> like, get closer, man. <laughs> Right. You know, no, you don't tell people. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying, though. Like, mm-hmm. like the correlation of somebody, of somebody who um, disguises what's going on mm-hmm. inside of them and hides it so well that you never know. And uh, you know, when you hear cases of like serial killers, like you'll hear stories of like you know Ted Bundy's wife at the time, or mm-hmm. or uh, he was people, such a good people, guy. People he was charming. Knew. Well, yeah. Ed Gein people always said he was weird, yeah, yeah, but yeah. Um, you know every single Sir, person yeah. was like you know. Uh, uh, Gacy, Gacy was another one. Gacy, 
Hopefully, Family yeah. Man, all that stuff, and people just never had an idea, but he hit it and disguised it so well. Uh, but, yeah. but people who are going through their mental health or their depressions and shit like that do exactly the same thing a lot of the time. I mean, the reality is, like, I probably do it a lot more in my lives when I'm doing my personal lives. I do it a lot there. I do it a lot there. I mask a lot of it because I'm just enjoying the moment. I'm like, man, I might as well just smile through this shit. Um, yeah, you never know, Alex. But, um, but yeah, like, I, I mean, it's it's just what we do. It's by, it's by form of habit that you just, like, I don't want to give off this impression of me being, you know, feeling like the saddest human being or any of that stuff. So you smile, you laugh, you make a joke or two, and you push through it, you know, and nobody knows at that moment what could be going through somebody's mind, yeah. you know, it could be, it could be from anything mildly dark to the darkest thing possible, you know, and that's why we always say is like at, at times you just need to know who you have in your corner, somebody you have near you uh, that you can reach out to, and if you feel like you don't have somebody and you feel open enough mm-hmm. and feel comfortable enough, our DM is open for that. Like, if you need to reach out and be like, you know, boom. The other thing was something that Mac introduced me to. An app. Oh, yeah. Right? There's an app on the phone called WISA. W-Y-S-A. Mm-hmm. That app is basically an automated AI mm-hmm. chat bot that will conversate with you when you're going through something. It's like a it little penguin. Yeah, it's a little penguin. It's pretty cute. Yeah. yeah. It'll talk to you and it'll have an actual conversation with you, reply in in line with what you're saying, and give you recommendations. And including if you are feeling to the total darkness of the mm-hmm. side of everything, it has an SOS button, which is supposed to lead you to a, to a suicide hotline if that is what you're going through. If you're getting to that deep of a mm-hmm. point. You know, and it offers other options like that you can add on, like therapists and stuff like that, which are with pay, but affordable pay. Yeah. Like it's an affordable pay for a therapist. It's a virtual (laughs) therapist, but somebody that'll hear you. And, you know, options are there. You know, not everyone can afford to go or have an insurance to go to a physical therapist locally. Mm. So you can do one through something like that. It's an avenue that exists. Yeah, There's a lot of things that exist for one person. Aside from the hotlines that already exist, but there are possibilities of things you can use that will help you uh, yeah. through any times that are rough. Like I said, I even mentioned to my own psychologist that I've been seeing for five plus years. And she was uh, really happy that I mentioned that to her if she could share it with her other patients. Yeah, And I told her I use that when I don't see her. If I need a read, I mean... It gets to that point, of course, I know what to do. But, you know, a little moments when I'm feeling down, I just talk to this this AI, you know, and you know, it tells you little things. Like, it tells you, like, oh, what are you trying to work on? And, like, oh, did you do this today? Et cetera. You know, it has options. Uh, another app I use is called Talk Life. And then there's other Better Stop Suicide. Uh, the Better Stop Suicide basically is like a little uh, breathing exercise. It tells you to breathe and, you know, you know how do you how, how has your thought process changed you know little things like that which you might think it sounds stupid or it might not work but you know if you put the effort if you're willing to wanting to change and you know like i said it's there you know it's available uh, again the one randall was saying it's wisa w-y-s-a again uh if you have apple ios it's the penguin i'm not sure if it's the same thing with uh, android like that yeah it's like a little uh, teal penguin or whatnot um, yeah but it, it, it's fantastic and i've shared it to a few people too that uh that i've gone ahead and downloaded too and it's been the same response it's it's helpful it's beneficial sometimes you just need to say some shit and you have nobody that you want to say it to sometimes that happens at two three four in the morning and you know you just don't have anybody you can reach out to that you can think of uh or, or that you feel comfortable with well yeah time. you might think that oh the, uh, is this person gonna judge me, judge me or not yeah. Just go to the app and yeah. And I've I've talked to like it's a fucking human like oh yeah fuck you or I'm going through this like damn why this is not happening so just think, yeah. it might sound stupid but it's helped me yeah at least I could say that it's helped me so there's yeah. proof the technology in it is really good mm-hmm. man like it, it really responds really well uh, gives you good exercises to try mm-hmm. it, it puts in different uh, like at, almost like 
activities to a degree mm-hmm. of things you can do to try and change your your train of thought in that moment a bit and find a positive mm-hmm. in that or find how you can get to that positive and it, it gives you good it gives you good paths good, good journeys that you can go on and uh to me it's it's been a beneficial thing i use it almost every day uh so i'm telling you it, it it's something that's that's useful I'm glad really to hear is. that man i'm glad uh that that happened uh you know yeah. i came across it and now you you know you did you came across you and uh, you know you're sharing it with other people yeah and like what randall was saying you know changes that negative that negative mind state to a positive unfortunately we're human beings i think it's like for every for every what uh seven or something negative thoughts we have one positive you know yeah. sometimes it's just it's just how it is but you know work work towards you know change your perspective if you want it you know yeah at the end of the day it's just how about how badly you want to change and you know you could do it you know yeah. it's something i learned recently you could fucking do anything which is I, it took me a while to realize that like i said i'm 31 i'm re- realizing that now and i'm taking my own steps to changing my life and shit's working because i'm yeah. making it happen so you yeah. can fucking do it you know yeah anybody can do it man it, uh, it can it could be anything Anything can end up being your your path to to healing, your path to you know even if it's a temporary bandage, whatever. It, there's always a path to something. Uh, for us, we found this that we do here. Uh, you know, um, my Mac also does thrifting. You know, things like that that allow him to do more out side shit Mm -hmm. i do painting you know shit like that like the collecting also is part of that you know like all that hunting that we do it's all part of that like it all lines up to that and anybody can find something that helps and benefits so it's out there it's out there even though yeah you have things in common with with people with friends you know you do things together also have something for your own self you know something you do by yourself that uh centers you yeah you know whatever it is for me, like I said, he does his painting. For me, uh, you know, it's, it's getting there back to normal, but writing the poems, lyrics, you know, it's some shit I'm going through. Or, you know, I've been finding other things that have been helping me too. So, you know, anything like that, just find something, you know. And it's out there. Fuck, there was something else I was going to say. Not that. Um, no? You didn't have it right? Yeah, I heard that. Yeah. But yeah, um, bird's wrong. Fuck, fuck that bird. <laughs> uh, fuck. Yeah, Peter attacked me. I was like, you said fuck birds, Peter. I'm Peter. <laughs> like the, fam- the Family Guy. Dude, that is one of the greatest scenes ever. No, Peter. Oh, yeah. Should we spoil Spider-Man? No, play. <laughs> I mean, I think everybody's already been spoiled. It's Peter Parker. <laughs> um. All right. No, but we'll come to a conclusion here with this. Uh, reminding you again, uh, once New Year's passes, once it's already the new year, once it's 2022, we will be doing a post of the giveaway, which will include a uh, hundred plus dollar, you know, in yeah, it's gonna be a, in items. Items you know? worth a hundred plus, you know. Yeah, yeah, it was it was pretty, when we calculated everything. We calculated in a live already, mm-hmm. um, and we did a lot in the live. We calculated everything to sh- tell you guys. Yep. exactly what it would be worth um it does include three dvds that are all fucking fantastic movies right yeah just look at you know, you know la llorona the three the three the three set of la llorona fantastic fucking movie just look at the bright side of uh, it <laughs> santa claus santa claus the mexican cult, cla- cult classic yeah that mexican genius film with pitch oh my god the devil yeah. pitch pitch um, and Soul Keeper, which I think is the best. Soul Keeper is probably the best movie out of all of them. It's which the one a, that reviewed the best. Which again has a uh, Debo as uh, it's the first sci-fi movie that was wait, released by Sci-Fi, right? Yeah, the first uh, Sci-Fi produced Producer. uh film by mm-hmm. Sci-Fi, like the channel Sci-Fi. So you have some history in that. And uh, it it's also gonna get accompanied by uh, a prop replica of the rock of lazarus that mm. was used in the movie handmade and painted by me yo it's chill eh? um it's already almost done it's almost completed but that'll be a part of the giveaway mm. 
Yeah, he's seen 30 coins. Yeah, man. Yeah, I told him about he 30 show, coins. He introduced me to that, and I binge-watched both seasons. Yeah. Uh, they announced the third season, but I don't know when it's going to come out. Yeah. Probably working on it. Uh, it's fucking amazing, yeah. man. Yeah, 30 coins is great. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there was two pops. The Moon Pie Pop. Yeah, the Moon Pop. Uh, there's uh, are two that, Walmart that has exclusive. a value of uh, forty a PPG value of forty bucks, and then um, the carry the carry uh, Walmart exclusive pop of her in the prom dress. It's about a good twenty bucks. Or is it Homecoming? Or prom? I the prom. Remember. Was it prom? I think it was prom. Yeah. All right. I haven't seen the movie in a long time. But it's remember. fucking carry. It's horror. Yeah. I'm fucking. It's fucking what? <laughs> One fifty one in the morning. You guys look it up. Correct us. I don't give a fuck. No, but yeah. Uh, oh, the Captain America frame. Yeah, it's like a a wooden frame. A frame has a good twenty dollars. Like it's an all wooden like piece. Yeah, it's, it's um, a good twenty dollar value there. Give yeah. take fifteen yeah. to twenty. So there you go. You yeah, got, everything, everything. Just no need to calculate yeah. it again. Just all in total, it was a, a value of um, yeah. Yeah, so keep around and it looks wild. Yeah. Uh, yeah, rocking. Yeah, yeah, it's. I and mean, they used the puppetry, so that was a, the, the the fucking awesome thing about it. So yeah, like I said, if you're a reseller, hey, the, the enter the giveaway, you have a good hundred dollars in your pocket. If you want to resell there, invest it with the pops. You know how that works. I will say, like my piece is gonna be priceless. Hey, but, you know, like I said, it's, uh, it's I'm a having a lot of fun painting it though. It's, it's been fun making it. Nah, it looks great, man. Uh, also, it's a part of what we're doing here, you know. Yeah, first. Even the moon pie like has nothing but we connected it right we connected it with thanks killing exactly yeah because you know that we was had the only killing with the turkey in space that was the only yeah. film that had something to do, that with space. to do with the moon well then we got this though we got the uh lunar oh yeah lunar falls maybe yeah yeah now it connects I'm with saying the green dude in front of you godzilla i'm st- you're oh, right. you're stealing no fucking green dude in front of me uh, <laughs> <laughs> you're not stealing my this is my. This is this is actually Horzilla. It's not Godzilla. It's Horzilla because red he's lips. wearing red lipstick, like a whore. It's dirty whore. <laughs> you like it, don't you? Um. But yeah, so you know, just pay, pay attention to it. Uh, we already have a couple people who have entries already, as is for the people who joined in the original live when we uh, when we mentioned the giveaway. The ones that were there for the. For the explanation of what was in the giveaway, mm-hmm. uh, so we're gonna give options for extra entries and all that kind of stuff. So we're gonna make it, we're gonna make it where a lot of people can, uh, you know, have opportunities to be able mm-hmm. to take this uh, this gift home. And uh, we hope you guys uh, join us. You know, we're gonna try and uh, spread a little bit of love of our Ram Film Review project here and uh shared along with you guys Mm -hmm. and alex being a first winner of the random item in the the ram hidden giveaway yeah this we got to find a name for that this is all you know this is all but um improv here it's not gonna happen uh every single live it'll be spontaneous It'll just happen when it happens, and we'll just see if people notice things sometimes that will just somehow hide somewhere in the review. It's not gonna always. It's not gonna be things that we put up front because that's that's obvious. But you know the fact that Alex noticed and pointed out the Spider Man in the back behind mm. us. Uh, that was literally the purpose. Was like let's put something on there, and Mac was the one with the mm. idea. He said, "Why don't we put something in the background somewhere, and if somebody can see that and points it out." Even if it's afterward in the comments, yeah. they get something. So we didn't even plan it. Like we don't know what the fuck Alex is getting, but he's gonna get something. <laughs> uh, Alex, I don't know about the wheel. I've seen those wheels are rigged. I've seen uh, little tricks on it. So the wheel for what? The the name, the, the winner, the giveaway. Oh, I've seen no, some websites. No, no. I mean, I we can do. Maybe I don't know the old school hat. You know. Yeah, no. But if we have like. It's gonna be a lot of writing. No, bro. No, I, 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 I've used um, the randomizer.org. I, I know some. I, I know, mean, there's people who can rig it. Yeah, like to I land mean, on a We're certain... not gonna rig it. 
better than that, bro. We're not going to rig it. We're, we're going to go right to it. But I would use random.org because it's going to be easy to just put Ooh, all the me. all the handles, copy, paste it. Okay. And then we do, we'll do like some random thing like five refreshes. Okay. And on like the, or some shit on the fifth roll, that's the winner or some shit. We'll come up with a number. Okay. But that'll make it easier than the, the fucking hat thing. Um, I mean, a, a lot of the things with the rigging happen with the ones that people put money into it. Oh, okay. Because the they'll have, that's like, a friend. They go, oh, yeah. The raffles, yeah. Put, it, put in the money on that, too, bro. Mm-hmm. I'm going to make sure you get it. I'm going to end up keeping my pop and we'll split the money. Is it an extra 50 cents for you, yeah. That's why, like, you know, I, I trust people like my friend Moy, uh, mm-hmm. Toy Nerd Work, where he does for his raffles is everything is handwritten and goes into a little thing. And he shows, nice. like, a, what he does is pick, uh, he picks out every name and the last name is the winner. Oh, that's different. I never heard of that. Yeah. Not the first one. It's always going to be the that's last awesome. one he gets out. Yeah. So his shit, there is no fucking way that he's like rigging that Probably, shit, yeah. you know. But um, but yeah, for something like what we're doing, we're literally giving something for free away. Um, mm-hmm. uh, we promise there won't be any rigging. Well, uh, we promise to <laughs> ram you. Don't leave me pause like that for that long. That was a long pause. I'll give you something long. Uh, all right, so we're gonna go ahead and get out of here. <laughs> Uh, oh, Warriors, game. come out and play. Come out and play. And uh, we'll see you guys next time on the next review. Thank you for j- hanging out. Thank hanging you. Out. Thank hey, you for I j- keep j- doing j- shit j- like that, right? I've done that like all night today. Where it's I keep okay, saying, bro. "We fuck up." Man. <sighs> Thank yeah. you for hanging out with us tonight. Yeah, Thank you too. for uh, sticking through the entire fucking uh, long extended. Yeah, Rocky, it was nice. Yeah, man. yeah, it is nice. Thanks to our friend Plakata. Yeah. Who gave that to us and we're using it in this giveaway. Yeah. Um I hope you guys uh secure your butts. Don't let it detach itself and go kill uh killing spree. If your ass turns green, call Dr. Want some sake. Dr. Want some sake. Um but yeah, thank you for, for hanging out and sticking around through the, the mental health talk, through yeah. the us literally laughing through, describing and detailing Rectima. A movie about ass. A movie about a lot of ass. A lot of ass. Uh, but yeah, I hope you guys have a beautiful New Year's Eve, New Year's. Uh, drink safely. You know, just watch out. Party safely. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you're going to be in large groups or large crowds... Carry It'll probably be wise. Oh, oh. It'll probably be wise <laughs> to uh, to kind of you know, you know, wear some ma- headphones. Ma- yeah, yeah, headphones. We'll say that. Yeah. Wear headphones. Yeah. Just be safe. You know, uh, there's no need to fucking continue the spread. Um, but thank you guys a lot. Yeah, uh, we appreciate you, and uh, you know, we hope you guys have a fantastic, fantastic New Year's mm-hmm. Eve and a great New Year's Day. We'll be back very soon uh, to talk New Year New Year's Evil. Is that what it's called? Yeah. So unfortunately, what I wanted to do is watch New Year's Evil, a 1980s horror movie that was uh, request uh, recommended by uh, my friend Will. Um, you know, before the New Year's, but the, the timing and whatnot, and, dedic- and us doing like four fucking hours, four hours of you know, two movie reviews. But hey, it was all worth it. Uh, we'll do it later on, uh, you know, like I said, sometime next week, possible. Yeah. But that's our next review. Um, and our next, like I said, the next post, too, is about the giveaway. Yep. Uh, give you all the details there. Um, and yeah, just thanks for sticking with us. Yeah. I'm glad. I'll see you next time. Um, like if you're working New Year's, today, New Year's Eve, or tomorrow, New Year's, make that money. You know, you will have your time to rest. Yeah, man, just enjoy it, man. Be in the moment. And now we're going to go hobo jump on that train. Yeah, this is Pepperoni Nipples. I'm out. This is Randall. <laughs> this has been another Ram Film Review. <laughs> we love you guys. Back to my, Back to my. You.